Joining me right now on set is Fox News contributor Dory Murdoch and Democratic strategist Howard Franklin. Good to have you both here. Good to see you. Dory, how are you thinking Good about afternoon. all this? <laughs> There's a lot. You're going to laugh. There's okay. a lot. No, there's going, a lot to unpack. There's a I lot going on there. Look, I think if this uh, alleged tape where uh, private citizen Donald Trump used the N-word on The Apprentice existed, it would have come out, just like the Access Hollywood tape came out. Right. The Access Hollywood he came, said that word is not in his vocabulary. He says not in his vocabulary. Uh, there's been no other accusation that this thing went on. Back before he was running for president, you had people like Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, appearing at events with him. He was honored by the Congress of Racial Equality for his work in civil rights. Uh, there's a picture of him standing next to Rosa Parks receiving that medal. Uh, so there's been no accusation about this until he becomes president. I think if that tape did come out, it would have come out either before the uh, election to destroy him or after the election to destroy his presidency. Yeah, so far it hasn't, which, which says to it, me it, it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Okay. Um, but do you think that she's saying this in part because she's trying to gin up some action, some support, some notoriety from those on the left? Is that what this is about, essentially book sales? And so she gets some TV time. Uh, they pay attention because, let's not forget, they have over and over and over again sought to paint him as a racist. Well, that's war. right. And the thing is, you can't prove a negative. You, you can't play the untaped that doesn't exist. And so uh, it, because this, it, if it's there, we need to see it. If it's not there, there's no way to prove it doesn't exist. So the storm cloud stays over his head and people think, well, I guess this proves he's a racist, even though there's no proof that this tape exists. But the accusation itself yeah. can linger is and, that, and target. Howard, what's the thinking on that? Is that, is that how you guys are going to get the Dems out to the polls? You know, you just keep saying this president's <laughs> a racist. So I'll tell you, no one in America likes a racist. That is not who we are as Americans. And when you start calling people things like that, it, it has an effect. And so there's an emotional response. So as, as sad as it is, I understand the politics of it. I understand what they're trying to do. And uh, do you think that will have the intended consequence? In other words, will you get those voters to the polls to vote against Republicans if you continue to play that race card? Well, again, I don't, I don't know that uh, Omarosa is the tip of the spear for Democrats at the national level. You know, I remember when she went to the White House and plenty of people were scratching their heads and trying to figure that out. So I, 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 if, if uh, you're ass asserting that there's some coordination or collusion uh, between Omarosa and Democrats, I, I'd be No, but I'm just looking I'm at how many people keep putting her on television over and over and over again. Well, she's you know, obviously they, shown she's, a, she's, she's not got selling a knack for books. getting on television. I mean, a few, but she isn't doing that well, but they keep well, she, putting she her on. She obviously has a, a knack for, uh, she has a knack for getting on television. Television, obviously, well before here, wouldn't be talking about it. But more to the point, I believe that this president has really riled up Democrats in a way that other political figures had not in the past. We, we have this conversation about Omarosa, but we've also got a, a, a GoFundMe for Peter Straub, uh, rounding the bend at $300,000 in the first 24 hours. We've got, you know, a household name in a Michael Avenatti, in large part because he's offered real opposition to President Trump. I think you've got the ACLU going from 400,000 members to 1.2 million paying members in the span of about a year and a half, all because they've shown their willingness to oppose President Trump. But I think you also have Democrats in districts we shouldn't be getting close in, uh, you know, fighting down to the wire on these special elections. So I think what you're really going to see is November 6th, you'll see Democrats, you know, winning the competitive seats really in opposition to who Trump is. I don't think he yeah, needs Deroy, anyone to stoke the flames Deroy, at all to get folks to get excited. You look at what's actually happening right now, and we're looking at the lowest levels of minority Correct. unemployment. And Absolutely. Whether you're talking about... Uh, African Americans, whether you're talking about women, whether you're talking about Hispanics, we're looking at very good jobs numbers overall for our economy. We're looking at serious growth, a lot of that related to tax policies and he has enacted. And uh, we're in, knock on wood, a relatively safe environment, which increasingly seems to be getting safer through some of the negotiations he's having with North Korea, uh, playing tough with China. So when Americans are, are, are trying to figure out which voting box to tick off, uh, will the Republicans be able to sort of ride his coattails into midterms, given the successes he's had, regardless of some of the rhetoric out there? You've, you've mentioned the record low black unemployment, record low Hispanic unemployment. Uh, a year ago, President Trump's approval rating among blacks was at 15 percent. It's now at 29 in the Rasmussen poll. That's doubled uh, because we're seeing that these low tax cut uh, policies, deregulatory policies, et cetera, and generally a peaceful world that we're facing, or more peaceful when we arrived, that so these things are working. That, right? so, like, well, I mean, what when the Democrats working. do is they play the race card. They yeah. scream racism, they yell, yell Klan, N-word, et cetera, et cetera, and that distracts people 
people from the good news that many black people are noticing and saying, well, you know, I don't know if this guy's a racist or not, but I'm going back to work. I'm making more money. These are good things. And the Democrats do what they always do, which is they play the race card. They scream racism because that's the only card but Howard, they have left. haven't they learned that identity politics does not work? I mean, Hillary Listen, Clinton I'm proved I'm going to just have that. to disagree here. Uh, African Americans are less than 15 percent of this entire country. So you're not going to wag the tail with a minority in this country deciding that they're going to somehow recast the, the long shadow that President Trump has already created for himself, uh, both through the candidacies or through the campaign for president, vanquishing 16 other, uh, you know, national Republicans, and then the 18 or 20 months he's actually been in the White House. No one has to define or redefine President Trump. He does it for himself you, 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 so every really, day over So do you Twitter. fundamentally believe he's a racist? I, I have no idea what his what his racial views are. I, I think there, there are plenty of But this is what the party's saying. Things. You're part of the party. You're a strategist for the Democratic I, Party. Honestly, and again, we, we started this conversation talking about Omarosa. I don't think Ms. Manigault will call herself a car-carrying Democrat. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to take that bait. Mm -hmm. What I will say is that every single day, with 280 characters, he says things that are deplorable and terrible that you would never expected an American president to say. I don't think you have to get to mm -hmm. racism to find reasons to kick this president out of the White House or to get rid of the Congress you know, I, that I'm empowers surprised the you're not taking that bait, because it seems as though every other member of the Democratic Party continues to do so. DeRoy, <laughs> I mean, that's what we've seen over and over again. They're saying he's a racist, he's a misogynist, he's Islamophobic, you name it. This is just the latest. This, this is just the latest. latest. Those those sorts of things. And, and again, I, I may make two points. One is, if he's really such a racist, why did Omarosa beg for a job at the White House to go work for this racist if he's really such a bigot? And secondly, whatever you say about his style and things he puts on Twitter, which I think we're, well, we should, could calm down. Yeah, four no, point, I, four, I think we, four point, none of us are too four point, fond of four point, one percent GDP growth versus about 1.9 under Obama in his last year. 3.9 percent unemployment, record low black unemployment, record low Hispanic unemployment, uh, the lowest unemployment for women since 1953 under Eisenhower. These are great things, and I think this is what will allow the Republicans to hang on to Congress in November. All right, we'll see. DeRoy Howard, good to have you on the show. Thank good you so much, DeRoy. Thank, thank you. you.